What's going on guys, it's Greg Mies Guys, and welcome to another week of the update show. We have a couple updates to the update show this week. Number one is I added a second camera to this one man production. So now when you guys get tired of looking at this angle of me, I can now switch to this angle of me. If this doesn't work, I'll cut the whole thing out because I'm honestly not sure how it's gonna look. It's just a GoPro on a stick, so we'll see. And number two, we're adding a segment that will start each show. If you haven't seen, uh, what has been going around on YouTube, there's a show called Some Good News, which is basically bringing the world good news on YouTube every day, which I think what the world needs, and I think people across the community needs it as well. So every week I'll bring you a short segment at the beginning of the episode of good news from around the lacrosse community. So make sure to leave it in the comments, and also send me a DM at ECD Greg on Instagram with any good news you guys think I should share. I would love to help spread the word around and just raise the overall positive attitude in the lacrosse community. So with that being said, our first segment of good news is Bates player and two-time All-American Jack Allard has been released from the hospital. He spent the last month in treatment from COVID-19 and was put in a medically induced coma. He has now made a recovery, uh, walked out of the hospital on his own power, and it's really amazing to see. Second bit of good news, Jack Valentine, a lacrosse player from Vermont, has made t-shirts. Uh, they selling it that have a flatten the curve graphic on them. He's donating all the proceeds to No Kid Hungry. I'll leave the link in the description if you guys want to go support that. Would really appreciate it if you did. And finally, Delaware lacrosse player Zach Strassner spent some of his extra free time building a community library for his neighborhood, built a little box, gonna put some books in there, make it free for his neighborhood kids to come and grab some books to learn a little bit. Zach, keep up the great work. And now on to the big news. This was a crazy week and it really all came in last night in player movement. We have Michael Sowers has allegedly, uh, this news was broken by Ty Zanders, uh, selected Duke as the place he will go play in 2021. As you know, Princeton wasn't gonna allow him any further eligibility. So he entered the transfer portal and has now said that pending admission to their business school, he will be going to Duke. That is going to be a ridiculous combination of players, not to mention you have Brendan O'Neill, uh, the top ranked recruit in the country, is going to come in and play with him in his freshman year. So the Sowers O'Neill combination plus all the other great guys on Duke is going to be unstoppable. I mean, O'Neill is a guy who's already college ready, size, speed. Uh, he's going to come in ready to play and have an instant impact. Combine that with Sowers, you've got a pretty formidable team. So that's big news. We know where Sowers is going and we're really excited to watch him again in 2021. In more player movement news, Jackson Morrill from Yale, multi-time All-American, he has also entered the transfer portal just like Princeton. Yale is not granting players additional eligibility, so if they want to play, they've got to go elsewhere. Additionally, Jamie Tromboli has decided to stay at Syracuse. They already had a stack roster. They were already the number one team this year. They're already returning Dre Porter at the faceoff X and Varello in the goal. That means they're returning a ton of guys to a team that was already stacked. They already had the best midfield in the country. Expect them to be a threat again in 2020. And a little under the radar one, Matt DeLuca, one of the best goalies in the country out of Delaware, has decided he will not go back to Delaware. He's going to move on to the PLL. That was pretty big news and a pretty big shakeup. Uh, I think he would be a really great addition to the PLL. He's got great size, great speed, and is obviously one of the best in the nation. So a good goalie coming into the draft for any teams that need him. In women's news, Kerrigan Miller out of USC, one of the best players in the country, is transferring to UNC. So that's a really big move in the women's game. Uh, to an already strong UNC team. And finally, not player news, but coach news. Last week, we let you know that Petromalo was not going to be returned to Hopkins. Now we have his replacement, which is Peter Milliman from Cornell. I apologize if I did not pronounce that right. Uh, he won the Ivy League tournament at Cornell in his first year ever as a coach, and now he's ready to move on to Hopkins. Really big shoes to fill, but I think will be up to task. Uh, they made that move really quickly. I mean, they really did not let a lot of time. Maybe they had time to prepare, knew this was going to happen, and already had candidates in the works um, but we're going to see a really great recruiting class come into Hopkins and it'll be really interesting to see if he can get that team chemistry when you have a coach that's been there for so long he builds up a way that things are done sometimes it can take a long time to transition uh, we'll see how quickly he can put that all together at Hopkins all right, so let's get an updated PLL draft list going here. Uh, they're obviously not going to have the draft this week, but hopefully we'll be having it soon. So, so far, people who have actively declared that they will be leaving college and not taking that extra year. You've got Grant Amen, T.D. Erland, Michael Krause out of UVA, Matt DeLuca, um, and that is all we know so far. We're still waiting on decisions from a lot of the top seniors, and I think the PLL is waiting on those guys to decide as well before they hold the draft, which makes total sense. And finally, the Q&A section. So Connor Vale asked, who is the best player you have ever played against? 
So the best player I've ever played against was post-collegiate. I obviously played D3, so I'm not going to play against the best players in the world there. Um, but in Ocean City, my first year ever going, I got matched up against Kyle Harrison. He was on offense, dodging from his signature spot at the top of the arc, came straight at me, shook me right to left. I was at least four steps behind him. He burned me, didn't score, thank God. Uh, but that is easily the best player I've ever played against. Best player I've ever played with would have to be Steel Stanwood. We played together in high school and he's one of the best players of all time. Next question from Shane Weimer. Who do I think will dominate face-offs in the PLL between TD Erlen and Trevor Baptiste? That's a really good question. Uh, we didn't get to see them play a lot against each other, but it will be a really great battle. In the PLL, we got to have Greg Renlian versus Trevor Baptiste, which was an absolute scrap. And it's always great to see those top guys go head to head, but you can't forget about some of those other PLL guys, um, you know, like Connor Farrell. A lot of those guys are still out there, and I think they're gonna put up a fight against TD, but TD's gonna come in. He's got a very high face off percentage, very similar to what Trevor had in college. And we'll see how it translates to the pro game because they do have some different rules, but TD does train with those lead level guys in the PLL, so I'm sure he'll already be used to that by the time he comes and plays. Aiden Gonzalez asks, what was your favorite moment from the PLL inaugural season? This one's easy. Brian and I were at Gillette sitting at the inaugural weekend, the very first game, very first faceoff. Stephen Kelly takes it. He's using the Weapon X, runs down the field, and scores the first ever goal in PLL history. That's something I'm sure he'll never forget. Paul Rebel gave him the game ball, and something that we will never forget as well. It's a really cool thing to be a part of something that big in lacrosse history. And finally, Chris wants to know, who is your favorite player to watch in the ACC right now? Uh, Chris Gray was obviously a lot of fun to watch. Now you've got Sowers coming in the ACC. But last year, um, I just love watching Costabile. He is a lot of fun to watch. He's a big, fast dodger. He, even with his size, he can still break ankles. We don't know if he's going to go back to Notre Dame or if he's going to go play in PL yet. Either way, I'm a big Costabile fan. Plus, he's from this area, so got to go local. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. I'm sure we'll have tons more to talk about next week. This was a packed episode. Make sure to leave me your good news in the comments as well as questions for next week's Q&A. Also, if you want, DM me on Instagram at ECDGreg, your good news and your questions. I can get back to you there as well. So thanks for watching. Like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day.